happening now uh, is something that God laid on our hearts to respond to the craziness uh, s- several years ago, the craziness of everybody predicting the end of the world and this is going to happen and Jesus is coming back on that day and Bible prophecy this and Bible prophecy that and all of these prophets about what's going to happen and none of those prophecies came to p- true. And we knew they wouldn't come true, but a lot of people didn't know. But how did we know and they didn't know? Because the Bible's very clear. And nobody should be deceived at a time like this. And so Happening Now was created to answer the bombacity and the craziness and the drama that is out there uh, regarding what God says about the future and when is the end of the world and is it true that on June, you know, or July 29th, it's all gonna come? Cra- no, no. And so to help me, once again, as we have in the past, to address these issues, uh, a man that needs no uh, introduction at this church, but I know that many of you are new. Uh, Amir Sarfate has been a longtime friend, a very, very close brother. We have traveled all over speaking together. And uh, he is uh, a major in the Israeli Defense Force. He's the founder and president of Behold Israel. Uh, Amir is actually an ambassador uh, for believers out of Israel all around the world. And uh, I can't say enough about him, but I can tell you this. Uh, on one hand, I, I, I could hand my family and my wallet and the keys to whatever I have uh, to those individuals. And Amir is one of those guys. And so I love him. Give a warm welcome to Amir Sarfate. <laughs> All right, so we're going to dive in, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go for this because we want to be very, very quick, uh, and we want to get to questions uh, and answer them. But uh, regarding, again, happening now, the whole genesis of this is answering uh, these dynamic questions that, quite frankly, the Christian church has suffered a black eye in many, many ways uh, because of these crazy predictions. Uh, We want to make mention of the fact that uh, our life in this world needs to be seen through a biblical lens. That's what we're going to be doing tonight is looking at the world through the biblical lens. And that um, we are seeing in our world today uh, the state of our world, the state of nations that are in a free fall. And uh, we'll talk about that tonight. Um, Before we get going, I want to say something that we were talking about earlier today is um, if we were to step into a kitchen tonight or maybe your kitchen, if you were to pull out some eggs... And you would say, here you go, you want to eat? Um, I think we should cook them first. But you would say, no, eat. So that's not going to work. <laughs> well, what if you pulled out some flour and say, here, eat this? I'm not interested. And I checked the internet to make sure this was true. If you were to add things like, <laughs> if you were to add things like baking soda, milk, sugar, you see what's happening right now? What sounded very unattractive by itself. Now I think, Jack, you're talking about a recipe. And I think if you keep talking, you're talking about baking a cake. And right now in our world, the things that we're going to cover tonight, just alone by themselves, not so interesting. When you begin to discuss what's happening in the world at the same time right now, we now have a recipe for something that God has predicted from the beginning. From the beginning. Amir, what do you got? Well, you know, we, we are watching not only free fall, but it's picking up speed. We talked about it, the fact that more and more countries around the world are actually collapsing. And the trust between the people and their government is gone. You're looking at the, what's going on in parts of South Africa. It's not the whole country, but still, you see... It's a terrible thing. You see uh, what is also going on in, um, in, in Cuba, you know. We're watching what is going on in France and in the UK when it comes to the green pass that, uh, they, that millions went to the streets uh, a couple days ago to protest. We are watching... Can you con- explain the green pass? Yeah, the, well, Many of you us know, uh, well, the whole thing of 
uh, only vaccinated people are allowed to, to do certain things in certain places, and you have to show that you have been vaccinated with that specific uh, electronic thing um, on your phone or whatever it is. So it's, 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 it's the lack of trust between people and government that I believe is not only picking up speed, but it is going to lead to a worldwide demand for a different type of government. Yeah. A different type of government that will no longer allow a corrupt government to rule one nation. They are looking for, no wait, don't clap because, <laughs> <laughs> wait until you hear what they want. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> We're talking about a, it is going to be a demand for a global government. And it's going to be a demand for something that will not allow a government to uh, be corrupt. To the point that when that world leader will step into that scene, he will be worshipped not by one country, not by two, but by the whole world. And so we're here we are, 2021, and we're watching the world falling apart. And we have the two options. We have the option of becoming depressed and angry and fearful, mm -hmm. or understand that we were warned and told about that for a reason mm -hmm. and for a season. And that is so we can, A, tell others about the Word of God and B, get ready to be out of here. Yeah. And so, so what we're going to try to do this evening is basically look at world events, then zoom in to the Middle East, and then zoom in to Israel. Because let's face it, um, Bible prophecy has absolutely nothing to say about the relations between different countries. I mean, you don't hear about a war between Germany and France in the Bible. You don't hear about, but it's all about their relations, the nation's relations with Israel, the land, and the people. And so eventually we will never be able to understand prophecy unless we understand how it relates to what is going on in Israel today. And, and that's why I love that verse from Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses seven and eight. I think we have them on the screen so you can see. Remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. Ask your father and he will show you your elders and they will tell you when the Most High divided their inheritance to the nations, when he separated the sons of Adam, and that is in the Babel, in the Tower of Babel, look, he set the boundaries of the peoples according to the number of the children of Israel. It all has to do with Israel. The boundaries, the nations, where they are, what they do, it is connected to Israel. And when you try to remove Israel from the equation, you become ignorant of the plan of God, the word of God, and the hope that we have in that word. So that's what we want to do this evening. Yeah, and, and I know that for many of you, this is new. Some of the things that even Amir mentioned a moment ago, you may have never heard this before. For example, he mentioned when we get out of here, or when we go up, or when we... These things we say, because we've talked so much about this over the decades, but we understand that you may not be aware or comfortable. So if at any time, remember, there's a question, or you can uh, text the question to the number that you'll see uh, on the screen popping up, uh, because we want you to know this. And in, in our notes, I, I wrote down, have hope, not sorrow. That's why we're here together tonight. As believers, and I want to say this carefully, as believers, we, we should never be the kind of people that say things like, oh my goodness, there was a, a 7.9 earthquake in Japan. Woo, the end is near. I mean, you look like a lunatic like that. Don't do that. <laughs> well, Jesus said there's gonna be earthquakes. We get that. But it's not something you cheer about. Well, it means that the end is near. Well, just wait a moment. The Bible does say earthquakes are gonna increase in the last days. Jesus said that's one of the marks of the end times. But at the same time, when we see these things happen, we as believers are not to be shaken. We're not to panic, and we're not to act goofy, and we're not to scream and cry either. 
everything that God said that we need is written down in the word so that we might have hope in these days. So you say, I don't want to listen to Bible prophecy. You need to stop thinking like that. God gave us Bible prophecy, as our good friend Dr. Ed Heinsohn says, not to scare us, but to prepare us. Listen to this, Luke 21, 25. And there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and the stars and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity. The word in Greek means no way out. The sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and the expectation of those things which are coming upon the earth. For the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud and with power and great glory. Verse 28. Then when they see these things begin, or now when the, these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Everything we talk about tonight, we want you to be encouraged by these things, not scared by them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That was a pause for you to jump in. All right, okay. Go for it. So let's start talking about world events because I'm sure all of you understand that there are so many countries around the world that are being shaken right now. It is not only by COVID. It's not only by corrupt government. Um, what is going on in Germany and Belgium and the Netherlands right now? Huge floods. And we're talking about mm. rains that have not been seen in, in that part of, of Europe ever, I think. I mean, the rain, I'm not talking about the flood, the rain destroyed the roofs of the houses. Not to mention the fact that hundreds are missing. Hundreds died also. They don't remember anything like that. We're talking about floods in China, Guangzhou, that city. I mean, you should Horrible. see how many of you uh, are um, subscribers to our Telegram channels. Okay, that's, how many of you are not? That's not enough. Raise your hands. Yes. You, you guys, look, some, they're not... <laughs> They're not being honest because some people raised their hands, but most didn't raise their hands. Yeah. Listen, so. if you want, okay, never mind. What I want to try and say is we, I share videos of, of the stuff that is going on around the world. Sometimes those are too graphic, and I know, I'm sorry, but you need to know what's going on. The floods in China also, they trapped hundreds of people in the subway Mm. Because, I mean, Horrible. they've never seen anything. So we're, we're looking at unbelievable things that even those were predicted in the scriptures as the signs of the end times. Okay? Now, we talked about the fact that there's also a growing number of financial experts that are predicting that the cryptocurrency, for example, mm. is now going to become a new global currency. Now, they're not sure which one, but they're sure that it's definitely going to replace everything else because it is, according to what they say, the most secure way to do things. And I'm not saying whether it's good or bad, right or wrong. I'm just telling you mm -hmm. what is being now uh, shared. We're also seeing uh, other things that are, are happening, such as climate experts. <laughs> climate <laughs> experts that are telling you that this is it. Uh, Let me, before we leave and go off to the climate thing, because again, I want to be sensitive to many of you that I've met who you, have, you, have, you, you don't have prophecy Bible uh, knowledge. You haven't read. You don't know where to read. And I, that's why you're here tonight. We're glad you are. But for some people in the mirror, they, don't, they didn't see the connection. So what about Bitcoin? So what, maybe it's a good idea to have one that's unified global Yeah currency. You know, mm. why not? Because yeah. you look around in the world and the world is hurting, mm. which is really hard for us. I told you yes. earlier, you guys, listen, 2020 in many ways hurt a lot of people. In many ways, people did better. It depends on where you worked and what you did or what you do. But America, as much as it suffered from 2020, financially did pretty good in the world. Not as good as China, hello. Remarkable, what, that's a whole other story. My point is this, that even right now in 2021, uh, look, the economy's taken off to such a point, we don't have enough people to fill jobs. We need people to get back to work because companies are, are open. As Americans, we're in a bubble. You think you've got it rough, you don't have it rough. 
The poorest people in America are rich, richer than most people in the world. The point is this, we're insulated and isolated. When he mentions a global currency, you say, what's the big deal? Who cares? The Bible says in Revelation 13 that there's going to be a one world global currency and it's not going to be uh, paper in coins. It won't even be Mm -hmm. a a Bitcoin. It's going to be numbers. So that's why what he said is important. It's numerical trade coming and that's written in the Bible, Revelation chapter 13. Very important you know that and the connection. And that's a way for a central government led by one person to control the whole world, not just the one part of the world. It's, it's quite remarkable. We're also watching the rise of a one world religion, if you ask me, because you know I've been watching carefully uh, what the Catholic Church turned into. And I'm sorry if I'm offending anyone, but, but it's emptying itself from Jesus and it's filling itself with ecumenism and it's filling itself with um, everything but Christ. It's all about, uh, uh, you know, uh, do good, be good, feel good, say good, and we are watching uh, stuff being done all across the world that will introduce a new form of religion where there is no one way, no one truth, no one life. For example, in Abu Dhabi, they open a big center where you have a church, synagogue, and a, a, and, and a mosque, and it is known as the house of Abraham, house of worship for all of them. Mm-hmm. And, and, and you can clearly see the direction is to no longer say, and by the way, it's a hate speech if you say that Jesus is the only way, truth, and life. Now, this is not acceptable anymore in many places. So we are watching, we're watching everything around the world moving towards that direction. And then, of course, add to that is always that fear that they install in people that the world is going to come to an end tomorrow because of climate change. And, and then, you know, you have to go to this Green New Deal or whatever it is and pour billions of dollars on smaller windows. What well, is it exactly all about? Well, This, the Bible talks about a one world currency and a one world religion. Which, by the way, that's during the tribulation period, which I believe is one of the arguments as to why you cannot find the church in the tribulation. Anywhere in the Bible, you can't find the church in the tribulation period. Mm -hmm. Having said that, look, you said, I hope I don't offend anybody. Listen, being offended is not a bad thing. It depends on what is being said. I offend a lot of people lately, so. So, so, so let, me, let me say this. To, because if this offends you, I want you to think about it. This pope is causing more Catholics, if a Catholic reads their Bible, they're leaving the Catholic Church because of this pope. I don't know if you know what he believes and what he says about Doctrine about God, about sexuality, about gender, about the religions of the world. About creation. About creation versus evolution. Mm -hmm. This pope is doing more for Protestant evangelism. (laughs) But listen, if you're a Catholic and you're offended by that, prove us wrong. Go ahead, please, prove us wrong. And when you cannot do that, go find a Bible teaching church. Really, go find a Bible teaching church. Because now's your time. Now it's your time to, mm. to come out. Do you want to show the video? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's so regarding the climate change, you see every, every, you know, every few weeks they tell you it's the end of the world. Al Gore, it's a profession. Uh, <laughs> he's been doing that for the longest time. Um, now it's global warming, okay? Climate experts. But let me remind you what in 1978 they used to say then, okay? Let's see it and see eight times in the past million years it has advanced and retreated with clockwork regularity if we are unprepared for the next advance the result could be hunger and death on a scale unprecedented in all of history what scientists are telling us now is that the threat of an ice age is not as remote as they once thought during the lifetime of our grandchildren arctic cold and perpetual snow could turn most of the inhabitable portions of our planet into a polar desert. In 
1977, the worst winter in a century struck the United States. Arctic cold ripped the Midwest for weeks on end. Great blizzards paralyzed cities of the Northeast. One desperate night in Buffalo, eight people froze to death in marooned cars. Pat Bushnell was on the road that night. Traffic just absolutely stopped. I was afraid of being stuck in the car all night long with the uh, cold and the wind running out of gas. And then what? I think that if we had to go through a real bad winter, just like we just went through, I think we'd have to think about moving someplace else. Move where? The brutal Buffalo winter might become common all over the United States. Climate experts believe the next ice age is on its way. According to recent evidence, it could come sooner than anyone had expected. Stations in the far north. You guys can stop the video, so check it out. We survived. You guys, the, listen, the, the young people, the young people in this room have no idea that when I was in junior high and high school, all the scientists, not all, scientists, the media were telling us we were going to be quite possibly the last generation or we might have children, maybe, but they would freeze to death. Why, listen, how many of you remember that? Look around, young people, look around. You pe people are f panicking over uh, climate change. Listen, we've already lived through this. Okay, it's called summer, fall, winter, spring. <laughs> but why, why are we talking about it? Because Jesus said people's hearts are gonna fail them for fear when they hear about these things. Listen, have you not learned in 2020 that fear is a very powerful tool? Yes. Fear can get you to do things you don't want to do. Fear can get you to sign up for anything. Fear manipulates. Fear has gotten people in complete lockstep obedience to most of it being lunacy, not knowing why they're doing what they're doing. Why? Fear. Right? That's never going to change. Yeah. Yeah. So, so as you can see, globally, we are definitely heading that direction. And uh, now let's zoom in, if we may, to the Middle East, okay? Mm -hmm. Because we don't... Um, what's going on in the Middle East? Uh, just about three hours ago, another Israeli strike in Syria. Mm. If you had Telegram, you would have known. Um, <laughs> I had to say he has Telegram also, just so you know. Don't, don't blame me. No, I'm just saying. He is a partner for the crime. So um, we, we have Lebanon is in the verge of complete collapse, and it's a very sad story. By the way, Israel offers help to Lebanon because the greatest fear that we have is that Iran is going to take over vis-a-vis -vis Hezbollah. And so what we want to do is to help as much as we can so the, so the, 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 the government or at least the people will, will not, because right now what it turns into, it turns into a battle between ethnic groups and between religious groups. It's no longer, uh, so now you have the Sunnis via the Shiites and then you have the Maronite Christians and then you have the Druze. And it's such a chaos right now. And, and the Lebanese people are suffering. They have two to five hours electricity a day. That's it. They ran out of gasoline in the gas stations. There is no water flowing because of the pumps that are operated by electricity aren't working. And you come to the point where even the military that used to be the consensus of the country is now being hated by the people because it represents a corrupt government. So now the people are even turning against their own military uh, and government. So, so what we see there, it's, it's, it's very, very sad. And that's the north. Syria, I don't need to tell you, mm -hmm. it's, it's already fallen apart. It's, it's not there. Although Assad was re-elected, yes, Sure. Um, um, this is not a country that is independent. Jordan is hanging on a thread right now, and uh, it needs uh, international help or else it won't make it. Uh, Egypt is now in a, with a 
horrible tension with Ethiopia over the fact that Ethiopia um, is now filling a, um, a whole reservoir as they completed the, the dam known as the Resurrection Dam, and that f stops the flow of the Nile all the way uh, towards uh, um, the delta of the Nile in Egypt, and of course will bring the farmers in Egypt to uh, have much less water than they have now. So you understand what's going on in the Middle East right now. Iraq is, is, is it's in chaos. In Iran itself, if you've been following the news, you know there are great um, uh, demonstrations and riots right now. Every day it's growing bigger and bigger. The Basij, the, the security forces, are, are killing people with live ammunition. Just today, 12 uh, were killed. And the whole Middle East is falling apart. And by the way, it's ever since the 46th president took office. While the 45th was there, it was the most stable time the Middle East had, and peace treaties were actually introduced in the Middle East. So we're watching, look, the, 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 the identity of the person who sits in the White House affects not just the citizen of the United States. It affects many other parts of the world. And the inability of the American government today to act, to, to do even something in the Middle East causes all the radical elements to make a move and to literally kick America out of the Middle East. I don't know if you know that, Afghanistan. <laughs> yeah, we know that. You guys ran away from Afghanistan overnight. Bagram Air Base was abandoned overnight. The Afghans are in complete shock. Afghans started now an exodus. People leaving Afghanistan on the way to Iran, on the way to Turkey, on the way to Europe. This exodus had begun already. Um, again, one place after the other within Iraq, within Afghanistan. And when Jesus talked about nation against nation, he talks about ethnos versus ethnos. It's not just country against country. Within the countries, we see ethnic group against mm -hmm. ethnic group, and it's all around the Middle East. I want to add something, and I'm encouraging all of you to go and look at the migration of people leaving and heading toward, they're walking through Syria, they're walking, I mean, you can go, go look at the line miles, miles mm -hmm. long, and where are they going? They're going to Europe. Some of the European countries will not let these people in because there's no documentation, they, mm -hmm. those, those countries cannot sustain this influx, mm -hmm. but these people are going to Europe. What will that do to Europe? It will destabilize Europe. In short order, because their, their economies cannot sustain this level of millions of welfare cases overnight. Are you with me? And he said it a moment ago, you don't think voting and getting involved matters? This is happening because the Middle East is being destabilized in these last several months. Because there's no leader anywhere to keep things in check. But... Again, remember I said, don't cheer about things. You know, oh, look, this is war and that thing. No, listen, this is very important. Nations must become unstable to welcome in the advent of the Bible, what the Bible calls is the Antichrist, mm -hmm. the coming world savior, the which, Antichrist. Which we believe, at least I believe, and I'm sure you will also in a second. Um, <laughs> we believe he will come from Western Europe because this... Oh, yes. We believe the same place where the Roman Empire yeah. came from to, to destroy the temple in Daniel chapter 9. It is in the same sequence of, of verses that Daniel talked about the 70th week, the last week, which will uh, start with the covenant that that leader is going to uh, confirm with Israel. And halfway through, he will stop the sacrifice in the temple, which, by the way, now, I guess, moves us all the way we zoom in to Israel itself. So, but uh, so again, this, the, you mentioned the 70th week. Correct. Question: How? No, if you don't know about the 70th week, read Daniel 9, as you Correct. said. 
Question to you, how long is the 70th week? Wonderful. So first of all, Daniel received a, an amazing uh, vision from uh, the archangel where he actually, um, under, I mean, the, the whole vision was about the nation of Israel and the city of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. It was about them and for them. So when you talk about the weeks, and the, every week is a time period of seven biblical years. A year in the Bible, in the Old Testament, according to Jewish calendar, is only 360 days. Mm -hmm. We follow the lunar calendar, okay? And so every year has 360 days. Every week has seven years. And the Bible says Daniel received a, an amazing vision for the exact time the Messiah has to enter Jerusalem, be killed for something he never did. In other words, he never really committed. And it says so in the yes, language. For, yes, he says in the Hebrew. And then he says, and the temple has to be destroyed by a great nation that will come. So not, the, the Jews are not going to destroy their own temple. A great empire will destroy their temple. And that is exactly what happened when Jesus came and then was crucified. And after his crucifixion, a few years later, we know that the temple was destroyed. But then Daniel's prophecy differentiated the first 69 weeks from the last one, which will take place much later. Yeah, yeah. The last one, it's another period of seven years. And again, these seven years are about what? About who? About the people of Israel and about the city of Jerusalem. That's why Christians must understand that tribulation has absolutely nothing to do with the church. That's it's right. not for the church, not about the church, and if you want to stay here, you're welcome. <laughs> but it's not for you. Now, it's about and I always say, if you go to Hosea 5.15, you understand, the tribulation is about Israel's salvation, or will lead eventually to Israel's salvation. That's also in Jeremiah 30, in Daniel chapter 12. But I want you to understand that that particular seven years period cannot begin, cannot begin until someone is rising to offer that peace treaty mm -hmm. for Israel for seven years, and he will actually break that halfway through. Mm -hmm. Now that someone, according to my New Testament, cannot be revealed before what? Yeah, Second Thessalonians chapter two. Verse seven. Yeah. Before the restrainer is taken out of his way. A reference of the Holy Spirit. Exactly. So church, um, it's, it's so, so important that we talked about a void in the world right now of leadership. These things must happen. We do not rejoice over it, but these things must happen. Mm -hmm. So as a believer, if all of these things are so, gee, if the world's supposed to fall apart, then I'm going to help it fall apart. No, you're not. As a believer, we're, we have our marching orders, and that is to live for the glory of God. Amen. We are to be sharing the gospel everywhere with joy and with respect, right, to people mm -hmm. that we share with, right? Yes. And we are to occupy till he comes. It means that you and I are supposed to be very busy about doing good. Mm -hmm. See, yeah, but the end is coming. We are supposed to be very busy about doing good. Mm -hmm. Till the day Jesus comes, either for your life independently or the rapture of the church corporately, you and I are supposed to be doing the right thing. You never put on a white robe and sit on the roof and wait for Jesus to show no. up. In fact, the Bible condemns that kind They'll of action. They'll take you without white robe somewhere else. You know? so, so just know that. Well, if it's all gonna go up in flames, then why care? That's a bizarre way of thinking because there's souls out there that we wanna reach. There's people who need love and compassion. Yeah. There's people that need care. And we need to reach them. So when we talk about the things regarding the end, know this. We are not saying, yay, yay, people are going to suffer and the world's going to implode. No, we recognize the times and the seasons that the Bible told us about. Jesus said, you'll never know the day or the hour. But Paul wrote to the Thessalonians concerning the times and the seasons. Mm. You will have no need yes. that I should write to you. Yeah. Very important. Mm -hmm. That's why this night's very important. Is the world, and again, look, we're at a handicap right now. I, I don't mean this to insult you, but we are Western and we're Americans. We do not 
appreciate the hour that we're in right now as the world is being destabilized as we speak. It's not just, well, in 2020, there was rioting and you were concerned about it. And there were people, and you didn't drive to Los Angeles or you didn't go to Oakland. You didn't go to downtown cities, did you? You were concerned about that. But now you're not concerned about it. There's no more rioting. No more rioting. You want to know why? Because the selection of a leader went their way. That's why there's no rioting. You're going to have to wait till 2022 (laughs) for the next phase of rioting. Listen, put it on video. Record me now. 2022 is an election Mm. year. As you approach that election year, you're going to start seeing our cities catch fire again. Why? Mm. That's how you pressure people into either not voting or voting a certain way. Why does that happen? Lack of leadership. Mm. What, what does that result in? A destabilized town, city, county, state, nation, world. Yeah. There's no leader on the scene right now, which is why Vladimir Putin is leveraging his power right now and sticking his nose in places like Sudan and Libya and other places. And oh, by the way, we don't have a video of it because I just, I can't find a good one. Today's Wednesday, right? Was it Monday or Tuesday that Russia put us on notice, man? Russia tested their hypersonic nuclear cruise missile. Nothing can shoot it down. Because it's so fast. We cannot stop it. We got caught with our technology down. And now we got to play catch up. And it ain't going to happen for at least four years. We're in trouble. And Russia is flexing their muscle. Why, Amir? Why is Russia important in a destabilized Middle East right now? This is it. So we're at the point where the region, the Middle East, is no longer uh, only the surrounding countries uh, right around Israel. Now we have greater powers that are coming closer and closer to Israel. Russia is the first one. It started with two aircraft, and it ended up with, right now, half of their military is almost there. Mm -hmm. And Russia is definitely having presence in Syria. It's having presence in Libya, in Sudan, as we speak. And Russia is interested in, um, in, of course, making sure that its presence will yield some gain. You know, they're not there for nothing. They're not there to just be the police of the area. They want fat contracts to rebuild Syria, to rebuild Libya, to rebuild Sudan. And if they're not going to get it, they will go after someone else who has something else that they want, such as Israel with the gas and the oil and the technology that we have. Also, Turkey, make no mistake, Turkey is with its back to the wall right now. Yeah. Their economy is in shambles. Their currency is down the drains. Turkey needs a war in order to revive its economy. Turkey is now being invited into Afghanistan by the Taliban. Turkey is already in Syria. It's in Azerbaijan. It, it, it is in Libya. Turkey is sending its arms everywhere. What about Iran? Same thing. Iran controls what's going on in Yemen, what's going on in, in Iraq, what's going on in Lebanon, and it has also affiliation with other places uh, in the area, such as uh, um, uh, Syria, as well as um, Hamas and Islamic Jihad in Gaza Strip. All that to tell you that when Ezekiel wrote his 38th chapter, he actually was more accurate than yesterday's newspapers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because he predicted that there is, when Israel is going to be safe, secure, and prosperous, and we've never been safer and more secure and more prosperous than today, Israel will suffer an invasion that will be led by Rosh, Russia, and it will include Turkey of today, which is Gomer and the house of Togarma, and it will include Iran of today, which is Persia, and it also mentions Libya and Sudan. Now, (laughs) you see, it's a 27-year-old prophecy that is more accurate than today's newspaper. All that to tell you that here we are, and we cannot 
We cannot stop Bible prophecy from happening. We, we just heard that. You can stand outside the house of where the Antichrist will rise from, let's say, and you can say, I'm not going to let you rise. And you know what? He will rise. You know, you can try to stop the Ezekiel war. You won't be able to because it will happen. God is not asking for our permission. He is not asking us to change the course of history because he told us what history is going to look like. He wants you by your decision and your life today to determine where you will be when these world events are going to happen. I often tell people the book of Revelation, as well as all the other prophets, it's not a suggestion. God, in an infinite wisdom, already saw everything. Mm -hmm. We cannot see it. He saw it. And he sent us an email <laughs> with, a, with exact things that are going to happen. You're not going to change it. The question is, where will you be when these things are going to happen? And interesting, we just talked about it. Um, we're watching conservatives flipping into liberals, but you're not watching the opposite. You're watching now what, what, what um, uh, Paul said to Timothy, that in the latter days, people will depart from what? Will, from faith. In other words, they were supposed to be believers. They were people of faith. They were conservative. And they will start following other things. Why? Because they are tired. They don't, they don't trust God. They trust the things that they see. They trust governments. Mm -hmm. they, they are afraid. They put their trust in the wrong things. Some trust in chari chariots. Some trust in horses. But we need to trust in the name of the Lord. So we, we're watching all of these things happening. And that leads me to... What happened in Israel? Why do you think Benjamin Netanyahu is not the prime minister right now? Because the conservative right-wing party that was for sure on his side flipped. And, because they, and how did they flip? They were offered prime ministership. Only six seats in the parliament out of 120. Take this, become the prime minister and be with us. And let's cause a change. The word change. No, Th seriously. sounds familiar. No, he's being serious. The word change became a major campaign word. Does this sound familiar? Yes. Where did Israel learn that from? We have Big Brother. Now, Proverbs. Oh yeah, Do we, we have, have that it. verse from right here. Proverbs. Uh, Proverbs thirty. Uh, it's no, 24 it. verses 21 to 22. There you go. My son, fear the Lord and the king. Do not associate <laughs> with those given to change. <laughs> <laughs> For their calamity will rise suddenly. And who knows the ruin those two can bring. That's good. That's good. And, and the change in Israel can be felt already. And I want to tell you something. I mourn. I lament the fall of my country. My country is not the same. I'm a very, very proud Israeli. No more. No more. I love my country. Mm. But what we have right now, mm. it's disgusting. Yeah. It, I am, I, I don't, you know, okay, so now I have a problem. Why? Because I'm an Israeli, I'm a Jew, but I'm also a believer. Okay, so I'm torn between my heavenly citizenship, my earthly citizenship, and my Jewish roots, and become, being part of Israel, but also I am part of the church. You understand that? You know, when, they, when the rapture takes place, I'm not going to stay here. Okay, watch this. So I know, I know, I know that my people will take the wrong path. Mm -hmm. Scripturally, I know. I know that they will be given to that change. I know that they will be deceived. This is the hour of trial that many people will be deceived. And I, I can see that happening. I am lamenting. So what am I going to do? Witness. Exactly. We need not to sit and watch it happening. We need to always witness. We need to share the good news. We need to tell them the, the hope of Israel is not military, government, land, peace process, or the, the identity of the person sits in the White House. The hope of Israel is their Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus. And, and by the way, 
they will find out that that's their hope. And unfortunately, for the most part, most of them will only find out after the tribulation or throughout the tribulation. And, and of course, at the very end, the Bible says, both in Jeremiah 30, about Jacob's trouble, that they will be saved out of it, and in Daniel 12, that they will be saved out of it. Daniel says, who will be saved out of it? Those who, that their name is written in the book. Amen. Which book? The book of life. How can your name be written in the book of life, if you're asking? If you believe in the one that gives you life, in the one that is the truth, the way, and the life. No one can come to the Father, not even the Jews. And for that, they need to accept him. When will they accept him as a nation? When they see him returning. Zechariah chapter 12 says, And they look at him whom they pierce, and they will mourn, and they will cry, and they will lament as one mourns over his firstborn. Mm -hmm. So the repentance will be there, the, 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 of course. But unfortunately, for many of them, it will be after a horrible time, such time that has never been seen mm -hmm. in the history of Israel. I want to give you a barrage of, of uh, scriptures here for a moment. And I want this to sink into your heart, into your mind. Take faith. I believe that in God's grace and goodness, you know, you, we went through 2020. And that was, uh, that was one pitch, so to speak, in the game. And if you think that, oh, we made it through 2020. Oh. The pitcher is about ready to deliver the next pitch. And they're going to keep coming. I tell you this not to bum you out. I tell you this to prepare you. Right. Hallelujah. 1 John 4, 4 says, greater is he that is in us mm -hmm. than he that is that demonic power that is in the world. Mm -hmm. So Jesus said in John 16, these things I've spoken unto you that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. You'll have difficulties. But be a good cheer. I've overcome the world. In John chapter 13, verse 19, Jesus said, Now I tell you before it comes, that when it does come to pass, you may believe that I am he. Luke 21, 34. Be careful. Boy, this is, a, this is for us in our age, yeah? Be careful because your hearts could be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life. And that day will close in on you unexpectedly like a trap. Don't get derailed right now. Don't get sidetracked. Some of you are being distracted because you've lost everything. Some of you are being distracted because you've gained everything. Some of you are distracted because you're in a state of neutral or, or the doldrums. There's no wind filling your sails. You're just existing. Watch out. Anxiety can come in all kinds of packages and you need to be on guard. And be ready. 1 Timothy 4, verse 1 and 2. Now the Spirit, that is the Holy Spirit, expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. I believe that's happening now. I believe it's been increasing. It's been intensifying. And don't think that it's just a church issue. It is a church issue, but it's a global issue. Mm -hmm. The lawlessness, the violence, what's taking place in countries that we're watching around the world become completely destabilized. I believe that people are listening to doctrines of demons. They don't know it because demons are deceptive things. Demons speak lies into the minds of people until their policies or until they're part of the apparatus of a culture. Mm. That's why... You praying for leaders and getting involved matters. That's why it's no time to be a spectator Christian. I tell you what, if you're a spectator Christian at this hour, you're probably not a true believer. Because the Holy Spirit has been stirring his people. Why do you think churches that have stood in the world are being blessed by God right now? Because God is calling his people to the word of God. But then there are people leaving. Why? Don't worry. Didn't the scripture say 
they were among us. But they were not of us. But they were not of us. But don't let that be you. Don't, don't quit. Don't give up. It's going to get tough. But listen, it's like getting toned up for an event. Hmm. It's like working out before the game. Your faith is being tested. Don't give up. God's not abandoned you. Don't quit. Don't go. Don't depart. Hang in there. Hmm. Titus 2.13, I love it. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Listen, you're to be, if you're looking for the blessed hope, that means you're engaged and you're active. You're, you, you are seriously realizing, wait a minute, I'm looking around and this is the first time in 2,000 years that Israel and the church have existed at the exact same time. I'm looking around and I'm seeing nations falling apart. I'm looking around and the world is leaderless right now. I'm looking around at the conversation of a, of a global currency. I'm looking around and I hear about a global religion. I'm hearing about all of these things taking place. I see the apathy and the, the church, the church, air quotes, dying. All of these things for the believer who knows the word, it's like, oh my goodness, any day now. Any day now. But if you don't have that perspective, you are going to be overwhelmed with grief. And you'll feel as though there's no way out. Listen, we don't have to ask the question or look for a way out. He's going to walk us through every difficulty of life. And then when he wants us to go up, he's going to take us up. Or if it's your time to go home, then you know what? You're going to slip on a banana peel, not on campus, off property, and go to heaven. Uh, I want to share one verse, and then you talk, and then we'll go to Q&A. So listen to this. You guys all know this verse. I want to read it a little bit different. Uh, Hebrews 10.24 and, 10, and Hebrews 10.25. Watch this, everybody. Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. That's not a suggestion. If there was an 11th commandment, this is it. How many of you are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ? Raise your hands. Okay, do you know what? We are commanded in verse 24. We are commanded to consider one another, to stir one another up to good works. You know what that means? That means you and I get together. Let's find out. In fact, you know what? There's a certain person running for governor. Texting him before service offered some advice on something. He texted back and said, let's do it. Here's what it was. I have a suggestion for you, sir. Why don't you run for governor? You focus on our toilets flushing, our streets being paved. Deal with those policies. Get us water, right? Turn this economy around. Why don't you let us, verse 24, why don't you let us, the believers, okay, you pray for me because I'm in a whole hot water if this flies. Because <laughs> look, not everybody in California is a Christian. Do you understand that? <laughs> Although I have to tell you, I wouldn't live in any other state. You want to, listen, you want to do Christianity, this is where you do it. Okay? So, so, so here's the deal. I said, why don't you say, I'm going to be the governor and I'm calling upon all of you who claim faith. Maybe you're a Jew. Maybe you're a Muslim. Maybe you're a Christian. Why don't you do what Jesus said and love one another? I'm going to ask the good citizens and the people of faith in California to take care of the homeless problem. Let the churches take care of those that are on the streets. And for those who don't want help, then we call the government because we pay taxes for that. Yes. But if people want a, a, a foot up, if people want a break, let's not put it on the government. Let's put it on the house of faith. And you know what we'll have to do? We'll have to shut our mouths. I don't want to hear another person say, oh, I'm a Christian. I don't want to hear it anymore. It means nothing to me. I want to see it. So watch this. Stir them up. 
stir up one another. In other words, I'm going to be challenging you. We're going to go after the homeless in our communities. We're going to, we're going to love them. We're going to give them an every chance to get right. And if they don't want to get right, then the state will take care of that situation. Okay? That's just for starters. But watch this. We're going to do Hebrews 10, 24. But verse 25 says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. That's COVID proof right there. Yes. You can't, you cannot, you can't, there's no caveat to that verse. If a nuclear bomb goes off, we're still, we're still supposed to gather together. Yes. Watch out. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is, as is the manner of some. Do you hear that? but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. Yep. Okay, so, (laughs) see, I'm a prophet. I wrote it. This guy, he's so, listen, his book, he takes the verse, he sees an opportunity to plug his wonderful book. No, no, I did not. I did not. It's okay. It is the last hour it's right good. now, you know that. You know that Israel and the church coexist. That's okay. Let me, I, I want to say. I just, uh, I really want to say that we, we obviously live in times uh, like never before, as you just heard, and we are torn between our heavenly citizenship and our earthly citizenship and we must you know occupy until he comes of course and um, and when he comes to Israel we were we're watching unbelievable things that are going on here I don't know if you you know that but over the past uh, three months more Jews visited the Temple Mount than ever before in, in the last uh, few years. I mean, we, I mean, more and more and more Jews are having the longing to go and to uh, be where a temple one day is going to stand. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, the new prime minister uh, slipped in one of his things that he said uh, the other day, and he said that um, Israel reserved the right to worship on the Temple Mount for Jews and for Muslims. That's what he said. And guess who rebuked him for that? It wasn't Saudi Arabia. It was the White House. Yes. And he immediately corrected himself because we're government of change. We have to. And he said, no, no, I I meant for the Jews to just visit, but for the Muslims to worship. Amazing. Yes. So we're watching. Listen, but hey, he can say whatever he wants. Jews continue to visit by, the, by, I mean, we've never seen anything can like you, that. <laughs> can you imagine this, May? Can you imagine this country telling other countries how to run their countries? Can you imagine? But we count on the person in the White House who forget what he said. So, it's okay. You guys, uh, let's put a question up on the screen. Where is China in Bible prophecy? Let's go, let's go like fast. Let's get... Let's do a bunch of these fast. Okay. Ready? Go. Yes. You want me to answer? Ready? Go. Okay. Okay. Hurry up. Go. So where is China in Bible prophecy? I don't know. But I will tell because China is not mentioned in the Bible. Mm -hmm. But the Bible is talking about the fact that not, I mean, the kings of the East Mm -hmm. are not going to uh, be delighted with the Antichrist. And in fact, they will send their hundreds of millions of cavaliers towards uh, him to fight him, and uh, and so mm-hmm. I believe that if there will be a Western leader that will be worshipped, and he wants to control the world, maybe China will not take it so lightly and not uh, like the fact that he's there. And we assume that China uh, fits the bill for the for the uh, 200 million. The Bible talks about 200 million that will come and and go into the Middle East during the tribulation period. Yes. We, those, we don't know. We exactly. do not. We don't know. It could be those. But remember, it says kings of the east. It, that could be mm-hmm. uh, India, and places like that. One thing we know for sure: there, there cannot for Antichrist to arise. This false leader that swoons Israel and the world with peace and prosperity. There's no way that Islam can be in power because they would never allow that. And there's no way that China. China is has a global dominance vision. China wants to take over the world. 
Something's going to have to happen to China for the Antichrist. They don't to hate power. you. They want to replace you. you know, my, my point is it's this. It's not personal. It's not personal, exactly. They, they want to be the world superpower, and they don't hide it, and you need to understand. This is their goal, okay? And they do whatever they, it takes to do that. Now, where that's do you, for you. Yeah, where do you think Mystery Babylon is? Uh, listen, this is a huge uh, question with a huge answer. I'm going to go super fast. When you read the book of Revelation, chapter 17 and 18, you immediately recognize that in, in those two chapters, there is a commercial Babylon that is being spoken about, and there is a religious Babylon Spiritual. spoken about. Okay, when you talk about mystery Babylon, John saw this hybrid thing in the book of Revelation. John saw this bizarre thing that troubled him greatly. He saw this massive beast that when you look at the description of it, it's very, very similar to Zeus of ancient Greek mythology, but that's neither here nor there. John saw this bizarre beast running over the waters or the seas. And in the, in the mind of the Jewish thinker, the seas represent the Gentile nations of the world. And on its back was a woman dressed in scarlet robes and you read about her in Revelation chapter 17 and 18, and she's a false church. She is a false worship system. Mm -hmm. He uses her for a season and then turns and devours her. Exactly. John saw all this. So when it talks about mystery Babylon, you gotta be very, very careful and let the content or context of the Bible chapter describe what it is you're talking mm -hmm. about. Because the book of Revelation also says that Jerusalem is Babylon where our Lord was crucified. Isn't that an interesting statement? Well, we know that Jerusalem is not Babylon. It is a, it's, it's, rep, it's a representation of pagan worship yes. systems. Okay? Yes. So. Uh, and that's why it's mystery Babylon. <clears throat> and it's not the earthly Babylon in Iraq. By the way, it doesn't fit the bill because... Uh, the merchants of the sea will not see it coming down. There is no sea in earthly Babylon uh, today. So it's definitely something else, something of spiritual and commercial uh, uh, side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, who is the woman in Revelation chapter 12? My Catholic friends believe it's Mary, but it appears to me that it is Israel. You are exactly correct. Absolutely. It's, it's, look, we don't even belabor this. It's embarrassing actually, to say yes. that it's Mary. Because the Bible tells you who it is. Yes. But if you, listen, if you don't read your Bible faithfully, then you're going to believe what people yeah. tell you. It's Israel. And the Bible makes it clear it's Israel. Yes. And that's, the Lord prepared a place for her in the desert for 1260 days. This is when Israel is running from the whores of the Antichrist to be sheltered in the desert for 1260 years, which is exactly half of a seven-year period, uh, biblical, it's, biblical period. It's which half of a three and a half. The last part of the tribulation. Remember, when Antichrist yep. will break the covenant, and when he will enter into the temple and declare himself as God, they'll say, adios amigos. And, they, and that's, <laughs> by the way, that's when Jesus said, when that happened, run. Don't even pack your things. And he says, you know, pray it's not going to be on the Sabbath day. Pray it's not going to be in the winter time. Run, and they will run to the desert. What's amazing about that? Jesus said, when that happens, don't even, go, don't even go back home to get your coat. Listen how specific he was. He said, if you're on the top of your house, get down and, and run. 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 He said... Woe to you. In other words, I feel great sorrow for you women in Israel at that time that you're nursing a baby and you have to run and you're carrying an infant. And Jerusalem, I hope, listen, you don't have to escape on a snowy day. Yeah. In the winter, there was flash floods that will not allow you to cross to the desert. You understand that? It won't happen. And so, so pray that it won't happen in the, in, the, in the winter also. So Jesus says this. In other words, it's immediate. You're going to know it instantly. You know what? Think about it. Only now in the world, first time in the world, you can be doing anything and get an alert on your phone. Something is going to warn them instantly. Oh my goodness, look, there's a, there's a, 
there's a push notification from CNN. I'm, I'll turn it on. This guy's declaring himself, that's 80 miles from here. He's in Jerusalem, he's declaring himself, he's God. And they're gonna remember what Jesus said. And they're gonna run. And you know, CNN, we'll be here covering all the news <laughs> at the time. Yeah. And Maybe, Fox, by the way, and all the... Well, oh, we can take another question. Okay. This one will be... Uh, Maybe next one. Do Matthew <laughs> chapters 24 and 25 refer to the rapture? Nope. And tribulation? Yes. Or is it the tribulation and the judgment of Israel? How about this? Matthew chapter 24 and 25 deal with the tribulation period regarding Israel and the judgment of the nations. It has nothing to do with the church. You cannot find one verse, one scripture reference in Matthew 24, 25 that refer to the church. Not a one. It's all Jewish in its context and it's about Israel in the seven years and God's indignation being poured out upon a Christ-rejecting world. Very important. Simple, but very, very important. Is the battle of Gog and Magog part of the tribulation judgments? We see in Revelation. This is a great yeah. debated question. Yeah, but first of all, there's two Gog and Magogs. There is the Gog of the land of Magog from Ezekiel, and this is a specific alliance of five countries that will come against Israel. It is not something that it is uh, from uh, Satan that gathers people from the four corners of the world. It is mostly coming from the north, and that is to steal and plunder what Israel has. Israel, by then, is a safe, secure, and prosperous nation. It is one thing. But then we have in Revelation chapter 20 another, another description of something else that is likened, like Gog and Magog. And that is, of course, at the end of the 1,000 years millennial kingdom, Satan will be released for a short time from the bottomless pit, and he will gather with him people. Think about it. People lived in this, on this earth when Jesus himself in flesh, not just in the spirit, Jesus himself will reign from Jerusalem, Satan won't be here. There is no satanic influence. He will be in the bottomless pit. Yet, the minute he is released for a short time, he will gather people from the four corners of the world. Their number is of the, is the sand of the sea. That tells you, and what? They will come against the city of, or the camp of the beloved in the city, which probably is Jerusalem, we believe. And that is when God will send fire and destroy Satan once and for all, send him to the lake of fire. That's the end of that which is called Satan, okay? But these are two different things. One will be before or at the very beginning of the tribulation. One will be a thousand and seven years later, after the tribulation and after the thousand years of millennial kingdom. You understand? Two different things. Many times, we have the same name. We just heard about Babylon. Jerusalem received that name. We have Mystery Babylon, which is not necessarily the Babylon of the past. So many times, even Armageddon. Have you seen the movie Armageddon with Bruce Willis? Well, it has nothing to do with Armageddon. But the idea of Armageddon is that it's the end of the world. So it was, it's being used. And therefore, sometimes you have a specific name. And sometimes there's the spirit of that specific thing that is in other places as well. And these are the two Gog and Magogs that we have. Ezekiel 38 and 39 and Revelation 20. One is right before the tribulation or at the very beginning. One is right at the end mm -hmm. of the millennial kingdom. Keep this in mind. Ezekiel 38 describes Gog and Magog. It's very specific. It tells you where he's coming from and who's with him. And he comes out of the north. In fact, the old King James Bible is perfectly accurate in this. He comes out of the uttermost parts of the north, mm. the furthest part of the north. If you ever want to know what's east, west, south, north in your Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, it's from the epicenter of mm. Jerusalem, north of Jerusalem, always north of Jerusalem. He will come. It's specified, though, the first invasion, which is yet to come, is headed up by Gog, G-O-G. That is a title of a person. It's not a name, it's a title of a military political leader. Very important. 
Mm. Magog is a region, Genesis chapter 10. As Amir just answered, at the end of the millennial period, it simply re- means or refers to that, is, that the, uh, the attackers will come from the north as it always has traditionally. It won't be Russia, though, with uh, Sheba and Dedan. Yeah. Why? Because that's Ezekiel 38, very, very specific. Yes. How enthusiastic is the Israeli public about rebuilding the temple in Jerusalem? Well, right now, we have, it's mostly the Orthodox Jews that are excited about it. But remember one thing. I, think about it. Ezekiel war ends up with an amazing victory, not for Israel, but for God. God will fight for Israel, not America, not Sounds even the Israeli military. It's going to be God himself. Think about the Jewish people that have been right now saved by God himself from an utter destruction coming from Russia, Turkey, Iran, Libya, and Sudan. And then think about it. In their mind, there is God is in action, messianic aspiration, and a world leader emerges and introduces them not only peace, but also allow them to build a temple. That will change the whole thing. It's not going to be only the Orthodox Jews. Everyone will be excited about it. When, and, and that can only happen when Islam is no longer a dominant world religion. And that can only happen when Ezekiel war comes to an end. Because the dominant forces in the Ezekiel war is Iran and, 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 and Turkey. Turkey when it comes to Islam. You see, Turkey represents the Sunni Muslim world. They want to be the leaders as they were for 500 years. And uh, is, um, Iran is the leader of the Shiite world, of course. When both of them will no longer be an enemy, they will be completely defeated. Hundreds of millions of Muslims are going to shop for something better. And, and that's when this new religion of do good, be good, feel good, that will tell them you don't have to convert to this or to that. Just be part of our new system, religious system, that is accepting everyone. Mm -hmm. You understand? And that's it. And when that happens, nobody will oppose anymore for a Jewish temple on the Temple Mount. And that will open. See, right now, most of the Israelis are saying, I'm not that crazy to build the third temple right now because World War III will start. But when it will be Okay. okay to do that, why not? And the temple will be built and the world leader will be invited to inaugurate it. <laughs> and on that moment, he will introduce himself as God. He does, it says that he'll exactly do that. The Bible tells you that he will stand in the place. Declaring in himself as God. And it says that he will declare himself to be God and the world will be delighted. Yes. But listen, there'll be a remnant of Israel who wake up. Yes. They, they, they wake up. Yeah. Those that are not being given to change. Yeah. And, and, and it's interesting because honestly, if the Antichrist would be arriving now in Tel Aviv, the whole city will accept him. But if he will come right now to Jerusalem, he will have a problem. Because the Orthodox Jews aren't going to. But Israel is not super religious right now. You can tell by what you see in the streets during the, March, the, the month of June. You know what I'm talking about, okay? So my point is this. The day is going to come when the Israelis collectively will have that enthusiasm because the climate around the world will allow a third temple to be there. Mm. But when the Antichrist will make that move of declaring himself as God, that's when those that are not going to uh, be part of that will run and flee to where? Petra. To the desert, where <clears throat> exactly, where God is preparing. God prepared a place for them. For how long? 1260 days. This is why I'm always te- I always tell believers, the rapture cannot happen in the middle or at the end of the tribulation. That's because right. if you believe it can happen in the middle, you know exactly when. You know exactly the day. Because 1260 days are right at the middle. Hello? And if, if you say it's at the end, it's exactly. 2520 days. And it's a bungee jump because you have to come back immediately. 
Why did Jesus go to prepare a place for you? My point is this, the only option that leaves you biblically not knowing the day and the hour is before. Plus, we're not destined to the wrath of God. Plus, he will save us from the hour of trial, not through the hour of trial. I mean, there's so many. So, church, let's stand together and let's make the ultimate, the ultimate declaration uh, today, tonight, wherever you may be. (laughs) How can we be so confident and sure about Bible prophecy? It's because these exact same Hebrew prophets announced that there would be one who would come His name would be Emmanuel, which is God with us. And this one who is called, now listen, do the math. If you're a skeptic in the house, listen up. Whoever he is, his his banner over him is God is with us. Whoever he is, he represents God being with us. Number two, he has to be born in Bethlehem. The prophet said so. To a virgin. Isaiah says he has to be born of a virgin. The Hebrew prophets said that whoever he is, he will open the eyes of the blind, Isaiah 35. He will cleanse lepers. I'm not asking you to make a decision right now. I'm asking you to think right now. A thousand years, 750 years, 520 years before Jesus was ever born, these prophets said this is how you recognize him. And oh, by the way, 500 years before the event, Zechariah announced, Jerusalem, Israel, you're gonna be able to identify him because he's gonna ride into Jerusalem on the back of a baby donkey, on a little colt, and everyone's gonna shout, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It doesn't take an Einstein to figure out who this is. The same prophets that announced Jesus Christ as being the Lord God incarnate come into this world in human flesh is the same prophets, same prophets who said he was going to die on the cross for our sins. This is the same prophet or prophets that announce these prophetic events that we're talking about tonight. You can't get this in any books of Mormonism, Jehovah Witnesses. You can't get this in Islam. You can't get this in the modern day teachings of Judaism because they've departed from scripture. Only the Bible has this. There's no other book. There's no other hope. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but through me. And this is why you need to trust him because he died on the cross for your sins. He paid the debt of all of your sins, all of your lust, all of your pride, all of your anger, all of your temper. Jesus paid for that. Do you know why? He paid for it, I'm good, right? No, you're not good. Here's the reason why. He paid for all of it. There's only one sin that will catapult you straight into hell. Only one. He paid the price, but you never got the ticket. He offers you, you must receive what I did. I did it but you have to receive, here, take it, take it. And you sit there and you look at it, you argue with him, you question him, you you debate it, and he's holding it, and the clock is ticking. And you want to to play with him. Hmm. Time's time's running out, you don't know. Hmm. So let's let's pray right now, in closing. And maybe you're here today, Hmm. and you want to pray. Father, I pray now, Lord, as we consider Jesus, that if there's anyone viewing right now, if there's anyone here right now, out on the lawn, in any of the overflow rooms, wherever they may be, Father God, in Jesus' name, speak to a heart, challenge a heart, reveal yourself to them now. And may they be intellectually honest enough with themselves to recognize something's going on right now. Something's happening inside of you right now. You cannot refute the things that I just said a moment ago because they're pure Bible. And would you say right now, dear Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. 
I submit to you now. I give you my life. I ask you to wash me clear in my conscience. I ask you to wash away my guilt and shame. I ask you to write my name in your Lamb's book of life. Because I today receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I confess him risen from the dead. And I make him my Lord now. I want to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And I give my life to him. Father, speak to every heart. And right now, Lord, reveal yourself to them the way that you do that cannot be done any other way. It's absolutely awesome. Give them, I don't, I don't know how else to put it, except how you reach inside and you give a soul a hug is bizarre to me, but you do it. Well, hey, thanks for listening, and uh, we appreciate you. And of course we do in this time and in this age. Us being together and linking up together to get the Word of God out is actually ministry being fulfilled. And in fact, if you would like to subscribe, please do so. Hit the subscribe button, tell your friends about us. And listen, if you'd like to help us get this out on a broader scale, you can support us by hitting on the Give Now button. And look, we're gonna continue on with or without you. We're inviting you to join us, no pressure. But if you'd like to link arms in this venture, you'd be greatly appreciated. So listen, keep praying for us. We're praying for you. God bless you. And we'll see you back here real soon.